VIP access. VIP access with Aniko and Africa Loud. Welcome back to VIP Access. I'm really excited to have you here on my podcast this week. I told you before, this is the baddest podcast from this side of Africa. And today I'm hosting one of the baddest rappers in Africa, period. I'm not even going to say female, even though she's female, but it makes me so proud that I can confidently say she's one of the baddest in Africa and she comes from East Africa. She comes from Tanzania. And I'm Mongelea, Rosa Ray, Karibu sana, VIP Access. Asante. Thank you so much. <laughs> my friend. Yes, for yeah, a long to time. You are Instagram and social media <laughs> friends for a long time, and you're yeah. a real one. I have thank to say. You, it. Thank you, thank you. So are you? You honestly. are so real. Like Sounds your spirit, you are so real. Like to make more friends, Sounds I was actually it. looking uh, when I knew you were coming in Kaza Kwangalia. When did we start chatting? Like, oh, 2017. Imagine. Yeah, and before Rosaree was Rosaree, she was yeah. like very approachable. So yeah. I appreciate that you've always thank kept you. that humility. Thank you so much, Aniko. And you too. Honestly, I am so grateful to know you. You're a very warm spirit to Asante. be around. Asante. 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 And welcome to Kenya. How are Asante. you? How are you feeling? Wow. Ah, I'm ecstatic. I feel amazing. I feel I like happy. It. I love that. Um, Kenya is 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 like a second home to me, and people here are so warm. Kwangu, kwayoni na fra kubwa sana kuwepo hapa. Yeah. I think vile tu tumeanzia interview ni kasema one of the reasons na penda Rosaree you're so real like. You don't pretend you are, I, what you see is what she is. When I do, I like, you walked in, I'm like, look at this superstar. Any vile, you look when your videos, you know, in real life. But again, it's more than how you look because it's a heart and soul. Now, yeah. I think when your Instagram, you're one of the celebrities who's also real, like to show us your up moments and your down moment. Yeah. Can you yeah. talk about that? Of course. Um, I'm very proud to. Because I think, um, especially in this world of today, social media has made people feel like there's a standard that we all have to live up to, mm -hmm. or there's a certain lifestyle that we must live up to, which is unrealistic. Um, we we also need to be real with people. We, I am usually um, an ambassador for realness. Because if we are not real, then then why are we here, you know? So honestly, for me, I try my best to show my the people who are following me, the people who love me, who love my music, or who I am, Pia, who I really, truly am within me. And that's who I put inside my music. That's who I put inside my projects. And um, when um, I feel emotional, I write. Sometimes when I feel emotional, I talk to people. Mm. I talk to my people like, guys, um, this time I'm not feeling fine, you know? And I'm I'm happy that I have um, people following up on my music and fans who are like family to me, who love me and care to ask, how are you, you know? So I'm, I'm really glad. That's amazing. And, yeah. I, and I'm really glad that... Despite the ups and downs, you are here. You're good. Yeah. At the moment, you yeah. In the moment, you still find time to do you. Right. You know, to promote yourself, to come to Kenya. I always say, um, East African artists, we can do more. Yeah. I think at the part of Tanzanians, when I kuliko, the number of Kenyans coming to Tanzania. That's true. That's Tell true. Tell me about your industry. Sabo, your industry now, nakama, yani, you guys are so advanced. Mm. I don't know. I think Tanzania is one of the countries where um, if there's 10 households in a neighborhood, eight of them could am sani. Yani, <laughs> I don't know. It's just like that. People are very talented nice. in Tanzania. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be from Tanzania and to actually have that talent put within me because it drives me to do so much more for society, you know? And I think that's how, as an artist, I feel like we need to do more than just the art. You know, there's more to an artist than just the talent. Mm. You know, there is a cause. You have to come with a cause. Yeah. Because then why are you doing what you're doing? Yeah. You know? So for me, um, Nadhani Tanzania, tunavipaji vingi sana. Um, na nikitu ambacho tumebarikiwa nacho sana. No. Mm. Yeah. And you talk about a cause, that's 
you know, very true. I, I saw when you were having a media tour in Nairobi, you know, you had the poster saying, I'll be at this station and this station. And there was a visit to yeah. a children's home. Yeah. And that was so, you know, conscious of you and so thoughtful of you. Right. So Abu, when artists come, unaona promotion, promotion, but you don't see anything like that. So to set time aside to do that, I think um, is something I, I thought was very thoughtful. But then once I, I, you know, went back to your career, this is something you've been passionate uh, in About, from the yeah. very start. So if you could also share that part of you with, with me. Wow. Um when I I came for the media tour to Nairobi, I didn't just want to do it for me. Mm. I wanted to do it for others too. Okay. I wanted to, as much as people follow up on me, support me, are there for me, I wanted to be there for other people. Of course. You know, I wanted to do some charity work, give back, even if it's not much, even if it's a hug, you know, a memory, a smile, take a picture together. You know, I danced with this um, amazing disabled children and I felt like, wow, they're the same. We're the same. You know, we are one people because sometimes in, in society, we, we look at people as if they have weaknesses, like this is your weakness or you, you can't do this, you can't walk, you can't. But these people are people just like us, mm -hmm. you know, and we need to be there for each other. So I I I really had fun to go and, and to see these children smiling and happy and dancing. And um, I also went to this center um, that that is for women who are cancer survivors in Kariobangi. Mm -hmm. And um, wow, these ladies, I thought I was coming to give hope. I, I left that place with hope. Wow. Imagine. And it's it's so filling, you know. Most of the time in this world, we we pour, you know, we pour into other people. Mm. But when you meet people who pour into you, it's 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 very refreshing. That's dope. That's dope. And yeah. um, I mean, speaking of these places you've been to, Kariobangi, you know, being in Kenya, being in Nairobi, it's not something completely foreign to you. You yeah. do have a relationship with Kenya. Maybe tell me um, and tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, um, Kenya. I've, I've lived in Kenya uh, when I was a, a, a child back in the day. I How used young? To, um, wow. Primary and secondary school. I went here. So, yeah, I, wow. Kenya which, is which my second Which primary and secondary home. school? Um, in Eastlands. My, the pr primary school was in Eastlands. Mm -hmm. It's called um, Ainsworth. And then I shifted from that to Rudolf Steiner School, mm -hmm. which is in Rongai. Okay. And then I went to Bishop Mazoldi in Rongai still. And, and how grade. comes, like your parents were living here or how did you end up in Kenya? Yes, you know, my, my parents are Chagas. Or Chagas is in you, Yani, you'll find us everywhere. We <laughs> we go and we search, we look for money everywhere. So uh, my parents used to live here. I had uh, some of other, my other uncles also in Gikomba, you know, mm. uh, used to work there. So like, yeah, um, we used to live here for a while and then we went back home. That's dope. Um, yeah. But one thing that I actually was thinking and you you were mentioning to me before we started the podcast is like, yeah. you are such a great actor and really? you are so talented. <laughs> so, Babu, you know how to do the Kenyan like the accents. accents. So when I first saw it on social media, I was like, I think she must be half Kenyan. Yeah. Because you were doing it so well. Even I'm a Kenyan, I can't do that. And for <laughs> you to tell me like, I'm not even Kenyan. I just like studied these things. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about this side of you. Wow. Um, I have a hidden talent that many people might not know about because of the aggressiveness that comes with my, you know, my career and my, the genre that I, I do. Um, but yeah, I have this hidden talent where I can switch tongues 
And uh, I actually did a song called Kanairo, um, which means Nairobi. Mm -hmm. um, and I switched um, tongues from uh, Kikuyu to Kamba to Luo, and then Swahili and English. So it's five languages in one song. Um, I also did a song called Kanyora Leng before, which is Maasai. I've done um, in Up in the Air, I've put some chaga inside of it. So I really love to incorporate our mother tongue, our African mother tongues inside my music because I feel like it connects me with who I am and where I'm from. That's so cool. Yeah. That is so cool. <laughs> right. Wow. <laughs> so you spoke about, um, you know, the kind of attitude that comes with being in the rap game. Yeah. You know, being in the hip hop industry. Um, how's that been? Tough. I'll be honest. As a woman, it's not easy to survive in the hip hop industry because when I started, it was always, you can't do it because you're a female. Mm -hmm. You can't do it because you're a woman, mm -hmm. you know? You need to go and sing like the other girls, you know? And it just, it's very um, demeaning to tell someone that they cannot do something because of their gender, you know? Because that's something that we cannot change. And regardless of it, it's not something that we should feel like we should change. You know, yeah. it's something that we should be proud about. Like, yes, I am a female and that is my strength. Of course. That is what give, powers me, you know. And so I took that as motivation. And I said, you know what, I'll prove you wrong. And that's why my very first song was very aggressive because I had to tell people that I am a woman and I can do it, you know, regardless of the fact that I have to do it twice as hard as the men, you know, when. Others are getting a space at the table. I have had to build my own table. And it's something that sometimes people feel like when you're starting out, they are pushing you down. But if that motivates you, they are actually making you stronger. So right now, I just, it doesn't faze me. And the same people who say nay are saying yay. So, yeah. Get it? Yeah, lemons <laughs> lemonade. <laughs> no, but this answer, just what you said, kind of took me back to your album, Goddess. Yeah. And the f introduction is literally what you're saying right now. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, the introduction of Goddess is just me, you know? It is unapologetically I, Rosa Ray. Period. It's, it's like I'm getting uh, so goosebumps. bold. I'm like, who starts <laughs> an album kind of preaching to us, telling yeah. us? I'm not even rapping into I'm saying. Yeah, this is who I am. Like, take take it or leave it. I will not change who I am to, to fit other people's standards or the standards that are unrealistically set by society. I will not change um, who I am to make other people comfortable. You know, I will be who I be. This is who I be. You take it, okay, and love. That's you period. leave it, okay, love, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, the, the intro to Goddess, the album is just... Epic. Yeah, it's me. That's amazing, babe. <laughs> right, thank you. That's amazing. Thank so you. if you recall when you first came into the industry, I think I actually got to know about you when you came into the industry and at that time you were signed to the industry. Yeah. How has the, the industry label? Yeah, the industry <laughs> label for the for those who don't know that yeah. what do you mean? I was saying right. to the industry. <laughs> so the industry label, which is by um Aika and Ariel from Tanzania, right. Ariel right. Navi Kenzo. Yes. Um, you know, how was that? And yeah. even for not just how was that, but from that period to now, when you look back, like what have been the lessons? Wow. Um, and also the wins. Let's also celebrate the wins. Right. Wow. It's been a journey. Um, you look at 2016 or 2017? 2016. Yeah, that's when yes. you came out. Like, yes. That was, that, that was when I was introduced because um, looking back, it was 2015, I think, that we I got into the label, mm -hmm. but you know when you get into a label, there's a lot of things that you have to do and learn and and then afterwards in 2016 is when I was introduced. And wow, it, it's been a ride. 
and I have to give it to Aika and Naril. They really believed in me starting out in my journey, and they had a, a, a big part to play to 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 give me the, the sort of like the bridge, you yeah, know, to yeah, get into yeah. the the music industry. So I give it up to them. I have so much love and respect for them. And looking back after the industry. Um, label uh, after the industry label she's still in the There's, industry guys yeah i'm still in the in music industry but like after the label um i got signed into another label which it it didn't go well because i felt like i was you know i was being put in a box mm -hmm. and for me um i really i'm a believer of limitless you know mm -hmm. when you're an artist you have to be limitless you have to to do something that makes you be able to flow mm -hmm. with your art and so i i had to be on my own to even learn who i i am as a person and as an artist you know and that's what i did so I eventually was, um, am, I eventually am since then, uh, an independent artist and uh, so far so good. It's been going well. It hasn't been easy changing the mindsets of people because mm. I live in a country where, you know, women have to wear deras and cook clean and be moms, you know, but I'm like, Yo, I can rap, you know? So I'm literally trying to change um, the, the mindsets of society. Of and um, of course, if you look at the, the hip hop industry, it's very male dominated. So everybody's like, ah, but you're, you're a woman, you can't. So I have to also change their minds about that. But my, the, the key, the, the, my cause my key cause is that I really, really want women to understand that they can do it within themselves. Not to be told, not to be preached to and all that. But I, I want to be uh, what sort of a blackboard or a, a canvas that it is possible for a woman to do what they believe they can do mm. and for a woman to use their talents and change the world. That's so powerful. Yeah. I, 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 you make me want to do all the things I, I, I didn't do already. And you can do them. You, it's <laughs> limitless. You, you, Absolutely. You're a goddess, you know? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So when you think back, um, just kind of like your earlier influences when mm. it came to music, especially women, Yeah. who do you think were your earliest you know, influences, inspirations, or, wow. you know, key figures, yeah. women, speaking about women right. in whatever industry, doesn't have to be just hip hop, but I mean, whatever genre, right. could be from Tanzania, could be from East Africa, Africa, or beyond, like, who are these women? Wow, that's a very deep question. I, I want to say, and I, and I probably sound like a broken record because many women would, many people would say this, but my mother, was one the the one I, I would say the same my mom person too. right when people ask you that question I'm yeah. like I can't think of any other woman yes like she's so strong she's gone through so much to raise us to you know to empower us to to put the the right mindsets into us you know and I I I still getting emotional. <laughs> I still look at her and I'm like, how did you even do it with three children, all girls being told that in society that she was being told that she was cursed because she was giving birth to only women, you know, because in the African um, society, um, male children are, are seen as, you know, power. Wow. You know, but Firstborn girl, secondborn girl, that, eh, what's wrong with you, you know? So that's, she went through that and lots of other things, domestic violence, but she rose from that. And just being able to be part of that journey and seeing that, it makes me want to rise out of anything that I go through, you know? So I will start with Mommy. Mama. Yes, Mama Jane. 
big up. And um, in the hip hop industry, I think my very, very, my earliest, the people, the women who I used to look up to, um, for one is Dabrat. I was a baby, but like I, I would <laughs> even go and do the hairstyles just like and that. just like the brat and like go and rap like what you like a whole lot of you know yeah and um yeah the brat Aaliyah I still really really like Aaliyah and later on I I I Nicki Minaj like wow the lyrical prowess <sighs> amazing so I could say those three. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. Yes. Plans are 2024? Ah, 2024 is looking up, I must <laughs> up say. Up in the air. Up in the air. <laughs> Always. If you know, you know. <laughs> and um, I'm looking forward to doing so much more with my career, with my life. Um, as a person, I'm looking to, you know, break boundaries, push pull doors, heal more, pour into myself more um pour into my child more um there's there's so much that i'm looking to do but also you know musically and artistically i also really really i'm looking planning to um do more collaborations um eps and albums this year so one thing we actually didn't speak about and we're about to wrap up this interview is right. this conversation between Kenyan versus um, Tanzanian rap. So right. it's something that has been really trending across both countries, or let me say South Africa from last year. Yeah. Um, what is your take? My take is we need to work together to take the hip hop industry farther to take the East African hip hop industry father, mm -hmm. you know? And working together means like love, you know? It has to start from a point of love, you know? I, I, I'm, I'm not a firm believer of beef or, or these other things that happen in, in the, the industry. I am a firm believer that love conquers all. And that's what we need to do. We need to fight together not each other together mm -hmm. so that's that's what i think we should do about the hip hop industry because when you look at the industry right now like there's other genres that have come in and there's this wave that the hip hop scene is kind of being pushed back and we've been we've been pushing to to get it somewhere so we need to push push harder together yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so that's what I think about what we should do moving forward. Any message you want to share over to the listeners, um, you know, the fans of Rosary, right. those who don't know Rosary, but just getting introduced, what you want to tell them? Wow. Ah, there's a lot that I could say. We could do this till next year, 2025. <laughs> this is a bad question. Every time I ask, especially rappers, yeah. they never know what to say. Yeah, because I think we're it's too a real. Thing. We're too real. You know, hip hop is the <laughs> realest genre. Like when you're doing love songs. I mean, songs do you want to freestyle something like, to them? Maybe? No, I want to leave them with a message. Okay, okay. Um, Ali, last year, I me with my sisters together with my sisters um we started a foundation called mirror me initiative mm -hmm. which is for it 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 is meant to for um mental health mm -hmm. and mental health is key to anything that happens in life really and so i just want to tell you listening to me that it is okay not to be okay and when you find out that you're not okay that is the first step towards being okay. When you finally admit that I am not okay, that is the first step towards being okay. So don't feel ashamed. Don't think, oh, what an icheka. Don't think, oh, what an ibeza. How they will, what will they say about me? Because they're also going through something, honey. So you need to realize that it is okay not to be okay. And that is the first step towards being okay. So whatever it is you're going through, you are capable 
fully of going out of it, of moving past it. Even gold goes through fire to shine. So as much as it's hard right now to believe that whatever is happening is working towards your good, I need you to believe it. Wow, wow, wow. When we got into this interview, you all thought it was VIP access and it ended up being therapy. So thank you for <laughs> thank that. You. Asante. Asante. Thank you. Sana. It's been a, amazing. It has thank been you for amazing. Having me. I'm so thankful to see you, to be with you, to touch your hands. Yes. <laughs> oh, goosebumps. Goosebumps. <laughs> Asante sana. Thank Nashkuru. you. Nashkuru Asante. sana. I think next time to Pasane Dar es Salaam or Kabisa wherever. Kabisa for a this drink. I'm a Arusha. You are Arusha girl. I am an Arusha girl. Mm -hmm. Yes. Arusha is my Never home. Never been to Arusha. So maybe really? to Pasane Okonek. Oh, it's and it's even closer to Kenya than Dar es Salaam. It is beautiful. I'll take you there. Okay. Personally. Sawa. Yes. Okay. And then you'll take me to your earring collection. Yes. Adele to Jack. I'll take you. Um, I, when people say you have nice earrings, I always have to touch to remember which one because then uh, there's so many. I'm like, which right. one is this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Rosa Ray. Asante. Thank you so much. Shukran. That was Rosa Ray this week on VIP Access. I promised you an amazing season that is actually bringing to the forefront amazing and leading women in the music entertainment industry. It's been so amazing to speak to Rosa Ray from Tanzania. She's a rap goddess. She's an amazing individual. Please follow her on all her social media networks. She has amazing songs out. Please make sure you support. She's probably going to have new projects dropping um, very soon so be there and uh, get the notifications remember vip access is on all social media channels so please go and check out our clips share with your friends and next week i'll be back with another amazing musician from east africa this one comes from rwanda it's gonna be lit so be back here and ciao bye <laughs> vip access season four is proudly supported by the australian high commission